Hello, Partnering for Vaccine Equity Learning Community members, and welcome to this afternoon's orientation session. I am Bridget Courteau, the Director of Group Learning for the Learning Community, and on behalf of our team at the Urban Institute, thanks for joining us for this brief introduction to what the Partnering for Vaccine Equity, or PAVE for short, learning community is all about. This is the third session that we've held like this. It repeats the information we shared at our October and December new member orientation sessions. And before we go further, I'm going to do a very quick review of how this session will work. You've all been muted upon entry to the session. Please stay on mute unless you're speaking. Uh, we offer live interpretation from English to Spanish during our events. If you'd like to listen to the Spanish language channel, uh, then simply just click on the globe icon in your Zoom taskbar to choose that option. We will leave time for Q&A at the end of our presentation, but we will be tight for time because we're only, uh, this is a 30 minute session. Uh, so we encourage you uh, to use the Q&A uh, feature at the bottom in your Zoom taskbar at and uh, chat your or add your questions there at any time. Um, and we'll try to answer them as they come in uh, in case our Q&A that we allow for at the end of the session is a little cramped. Uh, and we encourage you to use the chat as well, introduce yourself or share comments, but questions are better in the Q&A so that we are sure to see them and answer them there. And finally, like with all of our learning events, we will post slides and recording of this event um, on our community website and then circulate them through the digests that go out through the CDC managed adult VAX program listserv, which all learning community members should be a part of. If you have any technical difficulties at any point during the session, send an email to our community manager's inbox that's listed here, vaxequitylearning at urban.org. And I already introduced myself, and for today's orientation session, I will be sharing the stage with my group learning teammate and our website community manager, Luis Gallardo. So here's a quick look at how we'll spend the rest of our time together. Uh, first, I'm going to provide a, an overview of what the learning community is and what we offer to our members. And then I'll hand things over to Luis to review the components of our digital learning community onboarding toolkit and make sure you know how to find these materials. And Luis will also provide a live demo of the learning community's main, uh, the website's main features. And after we complete the demo, we'll have a special short presentation uh, about public good news, uh, which is a new initiative to help PAVE partners with their online health communications. And then we'll end with hopefully at least a few minutes to answer any questions that you might have. Next slide. So as learning community uh, manager, our aim is to provide you with space and opportunities to connect with each other and subject matter experts to share promising practices and strategies that will help you implement program activities and achieve your own goals around increasing vaccine coverage. Over the course of our project, we're also documenting what works and building a set of resources to support longer term efforts to improve vaccine equity. And here's how we're trying to achieve those objectives. We created, uh, sorry, next slide. We created and manage a website uh, for the learning community. It's a private site. You do need an account to access it. And Luis is going to share a lot more about the website and its features shortly. So that's all I'm going to say about it. About it. Um, but we also plan and carry out group learning events. These are virtual events. They range from large webinars and panel presentations to smaller Ask the Expert sessions uh, to training workshops. We offer about four uh, events per month on average, and they're typically open to all organizations in the learning community and others that are working on vaccine equity. And our topics range from addressing misinformation, training trusted messengers, partnering with other organizations in your community on your vaccine work, uh, and the science behind vaccines, and a whole lot more. We offer live interpretation into Spanish at all the events. We record everything and we share materials from uh, events on our website after the fact, including both the English and the Spanish recordings and any presentation slides. We coordinate three communities of practice, or we call those COPs for short. And these are subgroups of learning community members that serve a common priority population. Uh, these groups are driven by their membership, who form the steering committee, set their agendas, and decide what they want to discuss or work on. Our teams help with meeting coordination and whatever else the COPs need. 
Currently, the three COPs we have running are listed here. They're for the African-American, African diaspora serving organizations, Hispanic Latinx serving organizations, uh, and organizations serving Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, American Indian, and Alaska Native populations. And finally, under what we call our Promising Practices Initiative, we provided grants to and are working with 18 learning community members on short-term projects to implement and study a promising practice uh, in one of three areas, community-based outreach, social media, or hosting vaccine events. So these mini projects are wrapping up in the next month, um, and we're excited to share some of their uh, effects, some of what they've done with the broader learning community in a few months. All right, and now I'm going to hand it over to Luis. Thank you, Bridget. So as Bridget covered in her part of the presentation, there are a lot of moving parts within PAVE. So we created a guide to help us familiarize ourselves with the learning community and to help you all have a better understanding of PAVE more broadly. So we'll be going through that guide during this session, but feel free to download the files that seem most useful and follow along in the meantime. The files are available in Box, which I think Bridget already put a link in the chat for. And we are currently working on a page in the Learning Community website where these files will be permanently housed. And as a quick note, some of the fact sheets and documents are final, but we'll continue updating and translating these resources. And as you can see in the folder, we currently have some in Spanish. So now on this slide, we have some of the general learning community resources that exist in that onboarding toolkit. To the left is the About the Learning Community fact sheet that covers information about PAVE partners like the organization type, geographic regions, and program activity priorities. And to the right is a screenshot of our Frequently Asked Questions document that answers questions about the Learning Community website, group learning events, communities of practice, and the Vaccine Resource Hub website. And here are some screenshot examples of more learning community resources in the toolkit, but these are more community specific. So to the left is the two websites fact sheet. PAVE partners use the same login for both sites, the learning community website and the vaccine resource hub, but this fact sheet lists some differences between both sites. And to the right is an example of one of the many tutorials in our toolkit. The tutorials cover some of the site basics, like how to update your profile picture, how to register for an event, how to search in the peer directory and more. So before we dive into the live demo of the Learning Community site, we'll need to be able to access the website. So once your account is created, you'll receive an email from info at vaccineresourcehub.org. You can see it highlighted up on the screenshot. You'll follow the link in the email to create your password, and then you complete your account by signing into the Learning Community site. The link in the email does expire after a few days, so please try to take action as quickly as possible. But if it does expire before you can get to it, no worries, just send us an email at vaxequitylearning.urban.org, which is our learning community manager's inbox. And please refer to the first question in the FAQ document to learn how to request an account for yourself or for any new staff that might join your learning community team in the future. I think Bridget also might have shared the link for the registration form in the chat. So if you don't have an account or if you do have, if you know that someone you just joined your team that might not have an account, feel free to forward them that link and have them submit the form responses. So now we're gonna use the this to-do checklist that's in the onboarding toolkit to guide the demo that we're gonna be doing. The tasks in the checklist have tutorials linked to the rightmost column. And we won't be going through any of the tutorials in detail, but we just wanna show you the website pages where you would complete these tasks. If you already have an account in the learning community, feel free to log in and follow along. But if not, we hope you're able to take some time and complete these tasks at your own pace. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hop over to the learning community site. So just give me one second. All right. So here we have the home page of the community website. And as we're following along in the checklist, uh, the first thing on the the first item on the list is how to update your profile picture. So if you go up here, this was, is a test account. I have my, my picture on it for my own account. But everyone, when they first sign in or create an account, has a silhouette. 
And so because the website is primarily focused, like Bridget mentioned, some of the primary focus is around discussion and you know community boards and posting, it's always nice to put a face to a name or a face to a discussion post. So we encourage you all to, when you have the chance, just update your profile picture. It doesn't even have to be your face. It can be anything you really want that's appropriate. Now, the next item on the checklist is how to register for an event. So for that, you go here into the events tab and go to upcoming events. And as you can see, we have a very full calendar right now for the month of February. Um, and we have both Urban Institute events, so the events that we host, as well as partner events listed on here. Um, so whenever you have the chance, you can always go on here and register for any upcoming events or even look at some of our past events that we've had um, to see what kind of work we do and what kind of events we host. The next item is how to post on a discussion board. So for that, you go under discuss and learn under discussion posts. And if you scroll down, you can see some of the posts that have been made the last couple of days. But you can also create your own by clicking here on post and then selecting the community that you want to send it to. Right now, the full community is where everyone posts, you know, everything is pretty the, the general community site. And just like any, any kind of discussion post, you upload your text and post here. And very similar to this process is also uploading a resource to the community library. So in the community library, we have CDC resources as well as learning community website event event resources. So basically any recording or slides like the ones from today will be posted on here after the event. And there's also member shared materials that people from any learning community partner organization can upload, as well as I mentioned before, CDC resources and CDC communications. If you want to upload your own document, you go here to the create entry button. And very similar to the discussion post, you type in any contact content that you want, and then you would select a file type that you would then upload, whether it be a recording, a video, or PowerPoint slides. Now, the next item on the checklist is the peer directory or how to search the peer directory. I will say a little caveat um, for the site in general is that we are implementing a lot of design changes currently. So Maybe the next time we do this orientation session in a couple of months, the site might look a little different, but it's important to know that the functions will, and the purpose will all still be the same. So the member directory might look a little different in a couple of months, but for now it still works for if you want to type in, you know, like names or emails. So let's say I wanted to, let's see, Bridget's already suggested there. Um, if I wanted to find Bridget, I could type her name and then either send her a message on here or add her as a contact um, in your own directory. The next item on the checklist is how to customize your notification settings. So for that, you go here to my account and then under community notifications. There are four different settings that you can set your preferences for. So you have either no email, which means you don't receive any notifications. You have a daily digest, which means you receive updates daily at, or at the end of the day. And then there's real time, which is you receive live updates. So anytime that someone makes a discussion post, you will receive an email notification. And lastly, the one that this account is set for is a weekly consolidated digest. So for that, it's basically the same idea as a daily digest where you get a summary of the post, but instead of it being received at the end of the day, you receive it on the day that you want. So this one would receive an basically a yeah, consolidated weekly digest which, with highlights from the week whether it be discussion posts, events, or library posts, and it's all in one email. So those are the four different kinds of notification settings and how you can update them to your liking. And then last but not least is the resource hub, which I know I've talked a little bit about here and there, and I know it can be a little confusing, but like I mentioned in the toolkit, there are some fact sheets and resources to help with distinguishing the two sites. But one important thing to know is that you can access both sites bidirectionally. So you can go to the resource hub from this site, or you can go to here from the resource hub. Here's one of the ways you can do that. You click on the upper left-hand corner, and this is the home page. As learning community members, we all have access to an account on the resource hub, meaning you can also upload resources here that are then vetted by the vaccine resource hub team. And for that, you would just log in. So I'm already logged in because I was logged into the learning community. But you would log in and then click on my VRH on the top right corner and then select a resource to upload.
All right, and let me just go back to the PowerPoint slides. All right, well, now that we checked everything off on the list, uh, you're all officially onboarded to the learning community. Now you can always refer to this checklist or to the toolkit to refamiliarize yourself and check off some of these items that you might have missed today or you might want more explanation on. The learning community website is a very unique site, but the site's usefulness really does depend on how much we as a community all put into it, whether it be through resource posting, discussion boards, or simply adding a profile picture. There's still a lot that we don't have time to cover today, uh, but as, as I mentioned earlier, these tutorials do help, um, you know, to at least develop a basic understanding. But anytime, if you do have any other questions, please feel free to email us at vaxequitylearning at urban.org. I thought the email would be there, but it, it will pop up again later on in the presentation. And now we just have some very quick announcements. So I'll be launching a poll as I go over some of the upcoming learning community events. So we do have registration open for one, being the Reaching Rural Communities Quick Talks with PAVE Partners. So this is a webinar set for Friday, February 10th. The link is on the screen, and I think Bridget is sending it in the chat as well. And then we have some Save the Date uh, registrations coming up, which one being the titles, What Are the Social Determinants of Health and How They Matter? So this is going to be a new series. Uh, and the first event being Wednesday, February 18th. So we'll have multiple events throughout the next couple of months that are related or focused to this topic. And then the next one is in March called Create a Compelling Conference Abstract. And like I mentioned, the links for the registration links for these two events will be coming soon. But if you want to make a note of these in your calendar, um, so the dates are here for. Yes, that's a typo. I'm seeing them. <laughs> He's sent a message about uh, February, February 18th is a Saturday. Thank you, Lance. That should be, um, and I don't think we can fix it on the fly. That's February 15th. <laughs> so um, thank you for pointing that out. It is the Wednesday part is right. And this series will be every Wednesday, every third Wednesday at noon, there will be a different social determinants of health related event. So webinars, probably a little heavier on the webinars versus the smaller, um, more interactive trainings, but there will be some trainings that are part of this. The common thing is they're always going to be the third Wednesday at noon, um, which is February 15th. 15th, not 18th. And I wanted to add um, one uh, one thing. We talked about how you can uh, register for these events, and Louise showed you how to do that through the website. We want everybody to join the website, have access to it, visit it on a somewhat regular basis. Um, but if that's not something that you think you'll do or not regularly, that's not a way that you think you will register for events. Um, that's okay. Our events go out through those digests that I mentioned that CDC uh, puts out in their adult VAX program listserv. So if you are not on that listserv or you're not sure, let us know and we'll make sure to link you to it because um, we make sure that all of our events have little blurbs in those digests um, that go out and, uh, and registration links there. So that is the way a lot of folks also register for events. Yes. All right. And now I'm going to hand it off to Adriana to go ahead and cover this part of the presentation. Thank you, Louise. I'm going to do a quick um, audio check because I know I was having issues with my headset earlier. Does that sound okay? Awesome. Okay. Wonderful. Well, it's so such a pleasure to be here with all of you. I'm Adriana Diaz. I'm the Senior Editorial Manager of Community Partnerships at Public Good News. Um, and Public Good News is a nonprofit newsroom that distributes health news. Um, can you go to the next slide? So our, our mission is, is fairly straightforward and simple. We exist to distribute health news through networks of trusted community-based organizations and other trusted messengers. We actually just launched in May of last year. So we're, we're a fairly new initiative. Um, and we're, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about um, a really exciting opportunity. We're currently recruiting small but mighty teams looking to strengthen their social media skills. Um, if you can go to the next slide, please. 
basically we're hoping that we can find a few more organizations that would like to partner with us for a six month pilot. Um, if you are accepted into the pilot, you're going to receive robust capacity building support, which is funded by PAVE. And you'll be also receiving weekly content delivered directly to your social media feeds in English and in Spanish, um, as well as a series of team trainings and one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions that will really help you polish your platform social media strategy. And we'll work with you to, you know, also identify and customize a plan of action for your individual organization. Um, we're really excited to be able to offer this pilot. We, we hope to continue to grow sustainably, but this pilot is, is really important because our community-based partners are critical to the work that we're doing. Um, can you go to the last slide, please? So um, really, we, we're going to drop the the application link and we invite everyone to click on the application and see if you qualify. Um, our pilot really is an opportunity for us to continue building our partnerships program sustainably. And um, we're, we, we will answer a couple questions, I think, at the end. Um, but um, that's a quick and dirty kind of crash course on what we're what we're doing and um, really hope folks uh, apply. All right. Thank you, Adriana. That was really helpful and sounds really exciting. So now we'll go ahead and move on to the Q&A portion of the presentation. Feel free to ask questions about both, either the, the demonstration or the learning community orientation, as well as questions for Adriana and PGN. I see Johnson raised their hand. I'll go ahead and unmute. Can the link be emailed? Sorry, I don't think I heard the whole question. Do you mind repeating it, please? Can the link be emailed? Oh, can the links be emailed? Yes. Yeah, we can send them out after the event. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is there, do you know what link, like the application links? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. You need, you need to put my email in the chat. I'm sure okay. you have it. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we can find it, but we also, um, we could, this is a small group, we could just send it out to the registrants pretty easily. Is that right, Luis? We can kind of share that if that's something everyone might be interested in. Great. Uh, see one for you, Luis. How long does it take to add new team members? I think that is to the website. Yeah, so it can take anywhere from three to five business days. I tend to do all the uploads on Fridays, um, so at the end of the week. And then Friday is usually when you will receive the that email from info at vaccineresourcehub.org with the link to reset your password. And I see some chatter. And there was also the same question came in through the Q&A about the deadline. Um, Adriana, it looks like that is the end of this week. So that's kind of, is that end of day Friday the 3rd, uh, February 3rd, but it sounds like it is not, it's a low burden application. So even if that sounds like a lot for you all, check it out because it might be a lot less than you're thinking to fit into the next three days. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions come in. It's fine for us to end early. Um, I just want to also note 
uh, Luis mentioned the website changes that are coming. Um, some of them have already been made around the edges. So those of you who are somewhat frequent visitors may have noticed that we um, are kind of redoing some elements of the homepage um, to better feature our events. Uh, we're excited that we're also going to be adding a suggest a learning topic button or form um, it's for you to more directly tell us the things that you're interested in hearing about, learning about through our events. Um, and I also wanted to plug, and I did that through the chat, but you saw how many partner events we have on the calendar. Um, and we do already have a form um, on the homepage uh, for you to submit those. And many of lear the learning community members are doing that. Um, and that is how our calendar looks so nicely full too, is because it's not just our events, but every week um, it seems we get at least a couple partner events that we can uh, promote through the calendar. Uh, so it's a great way to get your event out there and your registration information out there is to submit them um, to our homepage that way. So our changes are all sort of navigational um, and hopefully will make the website a little bit easier to use and uh, better feature some of the things like those partner event forms and our new, new uh, sub submitted topic form um, so that they're front and center um, and easy to find. All right, I don't see any other questions. So I think we can uh, we can close. Thank you, um, Adriana Darshana for joining us and telling us a little bit about public good news. Good luck uh, with the application process. Uh, and you all, I, we chatted and, and shared our email address several times. So um, that is the best way to reach us about any learning community related uh, request. And it was nice to spend 30 minutes with you this afternoon. Thanks so much for coming. Bye, everyone.